Hey everyone, this is Dr. Kazi and in this video, we are going to learn about the clinicals of the clavicle bone, the scapula bone and the humerus bone. We are going to learn what happens when these bones are broken or get damaged. The clavicle, your beauty bone or the collarbone is the most easily exposed bone of your upper limb. It get easily fractured when a person falls on the shoulder or the outstretched hand. The fracture occur between the middle and the outer third. When the bone is broken, it is broken into two segments, the medial segment and the lateral segment. Now the medial segment or the fragment is pulled upward by the sternocleidomastoid muscle, this one it will pull the medial fragments upward. The lateral fragment is depressed or pulled downward because it is the attachment side of your chest muscle, the pectoralis major muscle, which will pull the lateral fragments downward. Now, when the fracture happens, the structure which are below the clavicle bone is compressed like the brachial plexus, subclavian artery and subclavian vein. These three structures are present in the space or the interval between your clavicle and your first rib. During the formation of callus, which occurs when this clavicle bone repairs itself, the suprascapular nerve, subscapular nerve is compressed because of the callus formation and it will cause the pain on the side of your neck. Now, have a look at the scapula. The fracture of the scapula bone requires very little treatment because the muscles which are present anteriorly and the posteriorly, they sandwich the scapula bone and they will hold the bony fragments together. So it heals itself. Now, two important muscles are attached with the scapula bone. The trapezius muscle and the serratus anterior muscle. Have a look. The trapezius muscle is balancing the normal position of the scapula. If the trapezius muscle is paralyzed or the nerve supply to the trapezius muscle is damaged, this muscle will be paralyzed and the scapula of the paralyzed side will drop and the patient will be like this with a drop shoulder or uneven shoulder. That is why it is known as the drop shoulder. Have a look. Now, the serratus anterior muscle is balancing the normal position of scapula because some other muscles are pulling the scapula medially. So serratus anterior muscle is pulling the, clavicle, the scapula bone laterally and downward. So when the serratus anterior muscle is paralyzed or damaged, the muscles will pull the scapula bone medially and the wing scapula occurs. It can be recognized by putting your hands on the wall. On one side of the scapula, we have the wing scapula. Now, what happens when your humerus bone the bone of your arm region is fractured. Now, we know that the humerus bone is divided into three parts. The proximal extremity, the body or the shaft, and the distal extremity. The proximal extremity consists of your head, the lesser tubercle, and the greater tubercle. The head of the humerus bone is damaged during the anterior dislocation of the shoulder joint or the posterior dislocation of your shoulder joint. Now, the lesser tubercle is the attachment site of the subscapularis muscle. It is also fractured during the posterior dislocation of your shoulder joint. When we have the violent contraction of the muscles which are inserted into the greater tubercle, we have the fracture of the greater tubercle. Now, what happens when your shaft or the body of the humerus bone is broken? Now, it is it can be fractured into regions that is above the deltoid tuberosity and below the deltoid 
tuberosity. The fracture line can be above the deltoid muscle insertion or below the deltoid muscle insertion. So we have two conditions. Condition one, when the fracture line is above the deltoid insertion, we have two fragments, the proximal fragment and the distal fragment. Now, the proximal fragment is pulled inward and downward by the pectoralis major muscle, the latissimus dorsi muscle, and the teres major muscle because these are attached with the proximal segment of the body or the shaft. The distal fragment is pulled upward and laterally by deltoid muscle, triceps, and the bicep muscle. When the fracture line is below this deltoid tuberosity, the distal segment is pulled laterally by the triceps and the bicep muscle. And the proximal segment is also pulled upward and laterally by the deltoid muscle. Now, let's have a look at the fracture of the distal extremity of the humerus muscle, humerus bone, sorry. We have two fractures, the fracture of supracondylar ridge and the fracture of epicondyle. The fracture of the supracondylar ridge occurs when little children or uh, you know infants fall on their outstretched hand with their elbow partially flexed. Along with the damage of the supracondylar ridge, the brachial artery is also damaged. And if the blood supply to the forearm is cut off because of the damage of the brachial artery, the muscles will be something like this and you have the zombie hand which is known as the ischemic contracture. Ischemic means blood supply is very less and your hand will be like this. Epigondyles are fractured, especially the medial epicondyle, when the medial collateral ligament tears the medial epicondyle during the violent abduction of your forearm like this. This is all about the clinicals of these three bones in the next video. We're going to discuss about the clinicals of your radius and the ulna bone. Please do like, share and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.